Hey everyone and welcome back to day 10 of our daily video series. We're bringing you content every single day up until the Kent Test 2022 and it's less than a week away now. So let's crack on and today we're going to take a look at a little math trick that I think will help anyone trying to read scales accurately. Let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So on the board we have number line intervals and we have a number line. And we're given a red arrow and a red question mark and it's our job to work out what that value is just like one of our videos we did recently about angle turns it might be tempting to kind of guess so up here we've got 36 and we've got 30 so we think it's going to be less than 30 maybe it just goes down in sixes is it 24 might put that down as our answer and we get it wrong okay so we need to make sure we've got a technique where we get it right every single time and once more in our pink box down the bottom, I think that we have a way that we can make sure we get an accurate answer every single time. So step one, in these questions, you'll always be given two values. Okay, and that's important. Here we've got 30. I'll write them out again, even though they're underneath and 36. Step one is to find the total difference. That's between the two values that you're given. So between 30 and 36, what's the difference? Well, we could do 36 take away 30. You might be able just to see with this example that the difference here is six and we're talking about degrees in this scale. So this is six degrees. Okay, so we noticed that earlier when we had a guess, we saw there was six degrees difference, but that's not the final step. Let's take a look at step two. Divide by the number of jumps. Our aim here essentially is to try and figure out what is one of these gaps worth. That's what we need to know. So we're going to find the total between here, which is six degrees, and then we count how many jumps there are. So that's one, two jumps on our number line. So we have to divide by that. Six degrees divided by two is three degrees. So we've calculated now that every single jump here is worth three degrees. Have we finished the question? No, but what we have done, and this is the most important part, is develop a strategy to find out how much each jump is worth. Now, the answer is easy to get to. Step three, find the missing value. That's because we're going to go here to our closest value, which is 30. We're going to count back now in threes. So here we have 27. Another three back, we have 24. And another three back, we're at our answer. It is 21, remember the units, degrees. So the technique really is as simple as that. Why don't we have a go at another question? Feel free to pause the video, let your children have a go, see if they can get to the right answer. Let's dive straight in. So step one, find the total difference. Well, our two given values here are zero and 15. So it's really easy to find the total difference there because we're working with zero. The total difference is just 15 milliliters. Just keep an eye on the units, might be useful later on. Step two, divide by the number of jumps. Okay, We've got one jump, two, three, four, five jumps. So we're going to do 15 milliliters divided by five. Each jump, therefore, each interval, we might call it, is a three milliliter interval. Now we have three milliliters put for each interval. We can work out the answer. It's down to step three. We can go either from zero and count up. We can go to 15 and count down. It's up to you. Either way, guys, we should have got the answer of nine milliliters. Well done. Okay, so it's the last example now on just a simple number line. Why don't you pause this video, get your children to have a go, see if they can get the answer nice and quickly now that they're used to these steps. I'm going to dive straight in. So step one, find the total difference. We have three kilograms to five kilograms. Aha, uh -huh. this is interesting. This is only a two kilogram jump. Hmm. Let's see how many jumps there are in between each interval here. So we've got one, two, three, four. Oh, who paused it and had a go and spotted a little bit of a trick here? two kilograms divided by four. Now, we might not be super confident in doing that. Two divided by four seems crazy. There aren't any fours in two. I can't count up, can't really use my times table knowledge. Let me show you a way if you're struggling. This is where the units come in really handy, okay? Two kilograms. Maybe you're thinking straight away you could convert kilograms into grams. Let's show you how that would work. So instead of two kilograms, we have 2,000 grams. Now it's really simple. We can definitely divide 2,000 by four. So let's do that. Fours into two don't go. We exchange. This is just the bus stop method. Good to have a good grasp on this as well, guys. Fours into 20 is five. Fours into zero, we're going to have two places at the end. That's 500, not kilograms because we exchanged over the units, it's going to be grams. So each jump here is 500 grams. Now we've done that, we've sorted out the unit problem, which is gonna be useful by the way in a question in a second. 
we can solve for the answer. So 500 grams, that's 3.5 kilograms. And then another 500 grams is four kilograms. We don't need to fill this in, but I'm just going to prove that it works. 4.5 kilograms, yes, good. Those jumps work because the next one is five kilograms. Okay, let's keep going. Five kilograms to 5.5 kilograms. Again, guys, if you're struggling with your units, you wanna stay in grams once you've converted, we could just be writing at the bottom here, 5,500 grams. They are equivalent, they are the same. Next one here is six kilograms or 6,000 grams. And if you got this as your answer, very well done guys at home, 6,500 grams or 6.5 kilograms. Both are acceptable in this question. There's no multiple choice to choose from. Either, the, either of them are correct. Well done. So now we've got the hang of it. I've got rid of the technique down the bottom. Hopefully you've remembered it. Really want you guys at home, pause this video, let your children have a go. See if they can get to the right answer now in a Kent test style question with multiple choice. We're going to dive straight in. This is part of some scales, very vague. We have 100 grams, 150 grams, 200 grams, and the arrow's actually before any of the value. Shouldn't matter, still gonna use our technique. What weight is the arrow pointing to? We've actually got multiple choice here, so we're going to just treat it as if we don't have the multiple choice. We're going to work it out, and then we're going to see if our answer's down there. So, let's take a look. Step one, what was it? Can you remember? It was to find the difference between two values. So we're gonna use 100 and 150. The difference between 100 and 150 is 50 grams. Now we're going to do step two, which was, do you remember? Yes, to divide by the number of jumps. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 jumps or 10 intervals. So we're going to have 50 grams divided by 10. This is where our times table knowledge comes in handy. That means that each jump here is worth five grams. Have we finished? No, five grams isn't even an option at the bottom. So we're going to keep going. We need to find out what this value is here that we're pointing to. So we're going to count backwards in five grams. Two ways to do this, count backwards like we're going to, or you could, one, two, three, four, five, just calculate straight away, that's a 25 gram jump. So two ways, you could do 100 grams, subtract 25, you'll get to your answer. I'm just going to count back and make sure in my head. 100, 95, 90, 85, 80. And yes, the answer is 75 grams. In the Kent test, we'll look at our options. Phew, it is there, it's B. We'd circle that or mark it on our answer sheet rather. We'll move on and using our technique, we've read these scales accurately. So now it's your turn. I've upped the ante a little bit here. This question is another Kent test style question. I've not put multiple choice because I really want you to focus on the technique at home if your children are having a go. And I want you to realize how these scales could be put in any context. Just because this is a circular scale doesn't make our technique any different whatsoever. And just for good measure, I've added in an extra step in the question. So not only do you have to read the scale, you then have to apply a second step via the question. I'd love you guys to have a go at this. If you think that you and your children have an answer to this question, leave it in the comment section down below and we'll let you know if you've got it right. Use this technique and hopefully reading intervals on scales becomes so much easier. We'll see you next time for another daily video.